Welcome, uh, good morning, and welcome. And welcome to this page sharing uh, program for page sharing. Faith is strengthened when it is shared. We have to share our faith. It's uh, so the 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 to share our faith and to understand the, the Word of God in its proper way. I have to three pictures as well as a video clip. Uh, uh, so the we are reflecting on the the, the by scripture readings of second Sunday of Lent. In the first reading, we have listened to the the, well, uh, the story of Abraham. Abraham and Isaac. You know this picture. You you are. Well, well uh, we have you have you might have seen this picture as well as we know the story. When you see this picture, what do you feel and what, what what comes to your mind? What question? Or why we put a test or why we put examination 
when they well, when we want to uh, uh, to send them to a higher grade. Make right? sure they're ready. Make sure they they're ready, and make sure that they have learned the lesson. As a teacher, I know I, I was with those people for one year or two years. I know what is the ability and who or can be promoted. So, for me, I know that these all people can be promoted. But if the university, if you ask the university people and say that, or the professor can say, oh, these all people can be promoted, uh, there is no need of expense. Will you accept it? Why? So now the, the, the test is for not, not for me, for the, not for the professor. It is for the student and for others so that they may they have to understand that he has the ability to be promoted. The same way the test is not for God to know that how much or how the, 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 how he is going to be, uh, uh, how he is going to do when he is present. He is to uh, understand the Abraham as well as the people who are going to be it. They have to understand that the, this, is the, this is how we, have, we can trust in God. And we should have trust in God because do you think that uh, when we go through the, the, through the book of Genesis, do you think that Abraham was, was he always faithful to God in his years? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, it is a So, this. Now, the a, a actual salvation History starts from Abraham, you know. When we go to chapter 12, the first verse. Now the Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country and your kingdom and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. Do you think that uh, what, what was he asked for? He was asked to go alone. Leave all the things and all of your relatives, everything, and you go to the place where I am going to show you. But what happened? He yeah. took <laughs> one another person who he took him with Lord. Lord was him. So we know that after that, after that there are lot of problems. Because since he has taken Lord with him. Which is a very good. And later we when we come to the to chapter uh, uh, we know that afterwards uh, there were fight between Lot's people and uh, Abraham, and they divided, and they, he, he has taken one part, and uh, Lot has gone to another part. So that happens. So what is the aftermath of what what happened since he has not obeyed uh, oh, God's words? So later, when you come to the chapter uh, uh, 15, so uh, Abraham was called at the age of 75. When, we, when he came to the age of 85, again, uh, God entered a, 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 a covenant with uh, Abraham in chapter 15 BC. He will have a son. These are things uh, his, uh, God said to uh, God revealed to Abraham. Then when we come to chapter 16, after 
explaining all these things, after convincing all these things, I will protect you and I will be your great everything. And he, Abraham, accepted, and you will have a son. Uh, these all things he promised. But later we see in when we come to uh, chapter 16, then we see what uh, Abraham do there. What did he do? He listened to Sarah's words. And Sarah said, Now Sarah, Abraham's wife, bore him no children. She had an Egyptian slave girl whose name was Hagar. And Sarah said to Abraham, You see that uh, the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Going to my slave girl, it may be that I shall obtain children by her. He, 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 he followed some other role with the, uh, uh, when he listened to Sarah, he, he, he take one another way to have offspring. What was the result? Ishmael. Ishmael, and afterwards, there was fight between Sarai and Haga, and uh, Ismail and Haga was sent out. There, in all these places, uh, Abraham experienced the, 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 the protection. Even, even though he was gone astray from God's words, he, he experienced the protection and also Again, in the, in the in, when we come to next chapter, 17, again, God come to Abraham with a renewing covenant. And later, we know that Isaac was born. And with all of this, we have to understand, uh, understand that, you know, understand today's gospel, uh, the reading, the, this reading, or when we come to chapter 20, God tested Abraham. So it is his uh, duty to prove that I completely trust in God. You, I know you, uh, God. I love. I know you. Uh, you are a loving God. You protect me. He has to prove that. So Abraham proved. That's why. So this is the, the, the this is the way how we enter into faith with uh, in God. So our sometimes we may fail in our uh, fail in our uh, life to be faithful to God. But God always loves us. Love God always continues His love. Uh, and bless us with a lot of blessings. Now, now, so is there any questions? You have any questions? Is it clear? Yeah. I don't know uh, whether you are. So next shot. Uh, so here we see two pictures. Have you understood what he meant? It's a parallel between Abraham and Isaac and, and God giving up Jesus. It's Abraham a, was willing to give up Isaac. <clears throat> Isaac was willing to sacrifice himself. And uh, God was willing to give up Jesus. And Jesus willingly sacrificed himself. There's, right. there's that parallel between the two. So this, this is a parallel. So when we understand, when we uh, think about the crucifixion. There is a there is an example in the beginning of the salvation history. When we have so that uh, a, a close relationship with God, we can trust in God, and God will fulfill His promise. That's why I said why. Why Abraham was ready to sacrifice 
I said, it is because he know he, he, from his experience he know well that God will design good things only in his life. The same way the relationship with God the Father and Jesus Christ. So why Jesus was ready to uh, ready to be crucified or go for go the suffering? Because they are God, the Father and Son are, they are one. What Father knows, Son also knows. What Father did, that's the unity. Knowing each other. He is there to uh, do the will of God. And also, here we see uh, some parallels. So, uh, Isaac is taking or carrying his uh, uh, firewood for the sacrifice to the mountain Mora. Mora. Is it correct? Mora. Okay. So, there Jesus is carrying his cross to Calvary. And Moses, uh, uh, Isaac is, and he himself was ready to uh, be sacrificed and he lay on the uh, food to be sacrificed. Jesus himself carried his cross and he uh, lay on the cross for the salvation of uh, the whole human kind. And historically also when we think, so there is proof that this, this, the sacrifice of uh, Isaac, you know, he was not sacrificed, the, the, that, that was uh, taken place uh, in, the same, uh, in the same place where Jesus was crucified. So in, uh, in chapter 22, we know that from chapter 22, we know that Abraham took Isaac to the Mount Moriah. When we come to Second Chronicle, uh, chapter three, one, uh, verses one, we see that why uh, there is a proof that Solomon began to build the house of the Lord in Jerusalem on Mount Moriah where the Lord had appeared to his father David at the place that David had decided, designated. So, uh, when Solomon started his, uh, designed the, to build the, the, the temple of Jerusalem, temple, he planned to have it at the, on the mountain of Moriah. So that is in Jerusalem. So Jesus was crucified in Jerusalem. That's why we, in the same place where uh, Abraham sacrificed, uh, went to uh, or uh, sacrificed Isaac. So, so there is a relation. Is there? I think this is you have already knew this, or this is the first time you should hear. So there is. So this is the relationship. There is proof in the Bible itself that this, the, the, the place where Jesus is crucified is the same place where uh, Abraham uh, made his sacrifice. Now, but another thing. When we come, so this is, you know, this is our transfiguration. Why did Jesus transfigure to or why, why did he show his glory to the disciples, James, uh, John, and Peter? To, to show his divinity, to prove that he was divine. Is there any answer? To Peter, James, and John. Yeah, those three. Right. Yeah, the fact that he chose those three to show that he really was God. He was transfigured in front of them. His divinity was shown to them and to us too, read the story. To prepare them both. 
Yeah. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So he was happy with what had occurred. Listen to him. Listen yeah. to him. That's correct. Which, of course, goes back to his baptism. Right. It's very similar to what God says at his baptism. Yeah. Right. Listen. Yes. So, so this answers, uh, so uh, Jesus want to uh, reveal his glory, the actual glory <coughs> of heaven and eternal life to the disciples. But from all the miracles that Jesus had, uh, had may have, had of, uh, performed. The disciples were there with Jesus, so why do they need further proof that he is also divine? When he was uh, in his divinity, he performed so many miracles, so seeing is believing. Why would they have any doubt about the divinity of Jesus? Even now, people have uh, doubt about the divinity of uh, Jesus. No, but I'm just saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even then, even though they have experienced the uh, miracles and other uh, way of uh, doing of Jesus, and they, even though they were with Jesus for a long time, they were not uh, in a position to understand the real uh, eternal life or the life uh, or after death. Well. 2,000 years later, like people like us, we haven't seen Jesus, we just believe. And because we believe, we have to take whatever the Bible has said. So, you know, for us it is even more difficult because if Jesus was walking around performing miracles, I remember John Paul II said there would be a, a line around the world a, a zillion times just to see who this man is and what he is performing. But unfortunately, Jesus has not appeared to us. But we still believe. No. So I guess we have got, I would say, one, one, one percentage up compared to the disciples at that time. Because they saw. They saw. No, don't, don't come here anyway. So do you think that the miracles are not happening now? They are. They are happening, but yeah. not as much take as... Take the as case those of days. this pandemic. We take the case of this pandemic. So, if we heard about this pandemic in March uh, 2020, uh, before, even before that we were here, and within one year, we have the, the, the vaccine. Is it not a miracle? It is because in, in previous vaccines it took years. It took 52 years or 56 years. Well, we have to thank Donald Trump for that. No, 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 Jesus, uh, after why, why transfiguration? When we think about it, uh, Jesus decided Jesus des uh, decided to uh, to uh, to offer himself for others by uh, go to the suffering and enter into he 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 he, he became ready at that. Moment. From that moment, even before that, Jesus knew. Uh, Jesus was well aware of uh, about the about the thing that he has to go through all these sufferings. And after that, they will be he will be uh, reserved by the power of God. So because he, so in order to understand, make make these people understand about the eternal life. Jesus revealed himself on the mountain of Tabor. So they, they have to go and proclaim or make it known to others that we have seen God, the glory of God. And it is, there is another thing there is. Uh, Abraham has gone through his uh, 
darkened period of life. When he was tested, he he, he was what what to do? What to do? May not be that much difficult because he had the experience or previous experience. He submitted himself to do the sacrifice. But we, for for the disciples, when they Jesus knew well that they have to undergo the the the, the, the trial period. When the, Jesus, who was a miracle maker, he said, divine person, all those things uh, they experienced. But when they come to the time of crucifixion, Jesus knew well that these people will go away. Only one. Oh, yeah. one, one was there. So then John has said, because then John has, John always speaks about love. He has got that much love relationship with God. That makes us. But the other love. apostles too have love, infinite love with Jesus. Yeah, but so there. at the time of trial, yeah. they have what God will. So, if so in the true. same way, in our life, if we don't have that experience, deep faith in God, trust in God, we also go away from God. That's what happened. True. That's, That's what, what happened. So we are we all are invited to have this experience where being with God, the best place to be with God is uh, to be with the Eucharistic celebration. There, Jesus came with bread. So when when we take the bread and broke it and gave it to the disciples saying, this is my boy, take this. So when we become ready to take ourselves and break it and give it to others, then we experience the love of God and the love of the neighbor. We are doing, we are transfiguring the same Jesus to others. We are transfigured. By doing that, we are not ready to do that, so we are not transfiguring Jesus. What happened to be a little bit of, we can relate. I was going to say, but we have the hope for heaven. We have the hope. That is, we should have. That's it. We should because have that hope. Because of the transfiguration, it has opened the fact that there is eternal life, there is heaven, and we are hopeful. That's the factor, that's the factor which uh, empowered these disciples to go even after the, after when they realized Jesus is risen and he is with them, they continue their ministry because of this. They have the, they have the, they, they understood that there is an eternal life after death. Yeah. Yeah. The same thing we have to do. What? Yeah. At present, what we have to do? We should have that experience and relationship with God. But Jesus also promised. No. No. Jesus also is promising us. When we read the Bible and learn the Bible, when we understand the word of God, the same God who promised them the same thing, He is promising us too the same things. Yeah. So that's why in, when we read the uh, with this uh, with this understanding, we have to read the the the, the uh, he also anchors himself to the faith they've had their whole life because we talk about the transfiguration of Jesus, but he appears with Abraham and Moses beside him. So he anchors himself, he shows them that he is sort of the apex of the faith they've had their whole life going back to the beginning. Oh, I didn't get the... Sorry. By appear, when he appears, Abraham and Moses are with him. So he shows himself as the apex, but anchors himself to the faith they've had their whole life. Yeah, that, that's, that's another thing. So, it is a scene of uh, the heavenly uh, glory. So, those 
those who were in Moses and Elijah is still alive and they are enjoying the blessings uh, in heaven. So it, it, it shows that there is life after death. I so said, good, thank you. <laughs> That's it's there. And uh, so if we have this experience, then we can also say with uh, say for uh, who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, or peril, or sword? No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors who in who love us. This is the meaning. So, Father, let's take Saint John Rebuff Parish. We have seen, I have seen at least 50 years ago, the church was quite full comparatively to what we see today. What in your opinion is lacking for us to help bring these people back to church? How would you go about, you know, we are trying all different kinds of things here in this parish, but it doesn't seem to resonate with the parishioners. How can you bring, what are you suggesting? Uh, you just said the Bible and all the beliefs that we have in the Bible. But in essence, that's the same thing which every Sunday the priest is talking about, but people don't come. What do you attribute that to? When the promise of heaven is there, this is a very short term, we are all mortal beings, we will all be, you know, eventually be out of this earth. When the promise that there is a heaven, but people don't understand that. What, what do you suggest to help yes. bring people back to this parish? Evangelization. What, is, what do you mean by evangelization? Uh, we need to share it. Yeah, yeah, spread the gospel. Every single Christian should become a Christian. So, when you are fired, go with that fire and lit another candle there when you, where, where you see somebody. It's frustrating though because you know you're trying various things and sometimes you don't see results as quickly as you would like to. Yes, but, but even then you try. Yes, I know. Yeah, you try. Try and yeah. continue. No. But if you think about the Old Testament. Take it. 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 Take Pray. Simple prayer. So, not what we have to do. Do something. Do something in this. Yeah, but I mean, we are already doing in this parish here over a period of the last, say, ten years. You know, this, we brought this book ministry in the hope that people would take those books off, read through them, peruse through them, and do something about it. But it seems to be very monotonous every Sunday. You get a few words said by the pastor or the assistant like yourself. People go about their own businesses and you don't know what it is, you know. Why? Think, why? think about the, think about the uh, salvation history. God is us. Salvation. Salvation history. Okay. So, God started this plan to say, take you. At that time, there was People were adoring different gods. And he took a man, Abraham, and he, 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 God made him known to that person continuously. He, he was, it took a lot of time to make Abraham to become a really a 
experience, God experienced that. No, God, Abraham was called at the age, uh, at the age of 75. And when he got uh, his man, it was at the age of, age of 85, 86. And when the promise is fulfilled, it was, he was 100. And after 20 years, God is asking him to sacrifice the same son. That's all very good. People in those times saw physically seeing is believing. They believed that. that. No, it isn't. Modern day world, <laughs> you know, like no, it isn't, because not everybody in Jerusalem followed Jesus. That's <laughs> what I said. You have to see the miracle. Just to see. Just to see outside. The, so we have. Uh, the, today we start spring season. Is, is it spring? No, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> so, you know, in my place in India, we don't have this separation. We don't see this separation. We have real separation. We have spring, we have winter, we have summer, we have water. So, when there is a. Uh, the, so, uh, so, we have to wait. Can we say that, oh, we, we, should, we, we should have the, uh, the, the spring season before winter? Can we expect that? No. We cannot. So the, there is a time for everything. Wait and see. And what is my duty? I have to live according to the will of God. Experience the, the, the faith and goodness of God and leave that. Let other people see it and let them come. That's the way how we can get another Christian. See and come. So when, when the disciples went up to Jesus and uh, he, uh, why are you coming? Jesus asked them. And then asked, where do you live? Then Jesus said, come and see. People should come and see. That means it has a deeper meaning. What is come and see? What an experience. Experience. Jesus is, uh, Jesus is welcoming to have an experience, an encounter. You have to welcome the other person to have an experience of Jesus. Are you able to, are we able to give that experience to others? Just have to try and then try. Leave it and that's all what you. That's all what you have to do. That's the faith sharing. When you have, if you are in deep faith, share that faith with others. That is what is expected from you. Then you are, you are making ready yourself for the eternal life. That's, so let us see. There is another. Video play. It will make you understand more what we must do. Thank you. For
of your feelings. It, it depicts it well. Yeah. Our this uphill is battle. This is life. This is what you are for. Go. Go and. That's what. But the most important thing is at the end, because he says, don't keep that faith to yourself. He doesn't say, I did all this, now for you just to stay with yourself, within yourself. He says, go, go and spread the faith to others. And that's where we're left. That's what we are called to do. And that's what he's been, he says it over and over, go, go, go. But we keep staying, staying, staying in our pews, in our church. And that's not what we're meant to do. We're meant to go and spread the word. There was a time in Christianity, people thought that they should, they should be aware of their salvation, so self-salvation. Yes, we have to think about that. But what Jesus says, you have to be careful about the salvation of the other being too. That's why Jesus said, go spread the gospel so that they may be saved. So this is the faith share which I can <laughs> this is the share. You know, Father, I just wanted to add it's true we, we're supposed to evangelize, but when you talk about spiritual growth, we're all on different paths. It's the personal relationship that person has with God in order to really grow. You can show them in the sense that the way you treat people, basically. I mean, uh, you can go knock on doors like uh, Jehovah Witnesses, but we don't do that. I think you teach more by your example. You have to practice what we, what Father Jerry used to say, what you take here, you bring out there, but you got to treat everybody with dignity and with respect. It's not always easy. I know, because people will just do things to, but it's how you react, that's what I had to learn. How do I react to someone that's not so nice, you know? How do I react? Do, do I react with, with belligerence or, you know? A lot of times I feel that way, but that's Jesus working in you. will teach you to, you know, back off and sometimes it just, um, you know, let people, be where they are, but show by your example more than anything else. You know, we learn something every new, every day. I know as a teacher, I learned a lot from the children. You better believe it because they're looking at you every single day. You better be practicing what you preach up there. You do, because they'll call you on it. I know I was called uh, many times. Hey, you said, you know, don't. And they're right, you know, you better practice what you bring. But like I said, spiritually, we're all on different paths. And you do your best, and God will do the rest, I guess. That's, that's it, because God will meet you where yeah. you are. That's right. Meet everywhere, everyone where they are. That's right. They don't have, you don't have to think that you... I used to, it used to keep me down that I used to think, oh, well, I don't know all the passages of the Bible, so how am I supposed to share my faith with others? I don't know everything. I still don't have all the answers. No. But I don't need to have the answers, no. because God has the answers. We just have to make a space for God. That's okay. it. So, it's not good, right? So, we have to start reading the Bible just to read as a, uh, uh, as a homework we can do. Just read the Genesis chapter 12 to 22. Then you will get the whole story of Abraham. Genesis chapter 15, 42, it is the story of three, four families. So read the Abraham's family, then you, then you, you will experience the living ups and downs in the life of Abraham. It is the same thing happening in our life. As John said, it is 
each one's encounter with Jesus is different. It should be different. Why we take thumb impression? Each thumb impression is different for millions of people. There are each thumb impression is different. This place, the, the, the carvings here, it is different for each and every. It is unique. So you, God created you as a unique person, as a unique person. You have some unique abilities. Why God has given that? To share with others. Experiencing God. You, experience, you have a different experience. That's why we have got different saints. Each saint has got different experience and relationship with God. You are a saint. You have a different relationship with God. That makes others to, to, to encounter the God and to have their own relationship. That is evangelization. God bless you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Let us pray. Together, together with the God and Father. Every Monday we have faith sharing. So let us pray together with Jesus, our Father. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God bless you, Father, and Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Glorify God. Thanks be to God.